Good day one and all. Welcome to the 8th lecture for the course IE306 Supply Chain and Logistics Management. I am Matthew Baby, Assistant Professor with the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. This will be the third part towards the topic Achieving Strategic Fit. So in this lecture, we'll be talking about or we'll be discussing the second step in achieving strategic fit that is assessing current supply chain capabilities. So, so in the previous lecture, lecture number seven, we talked about the very first step towards achieving strategic fit, which is understanding the customer needs and assessing the uncertainty faced by the supply chain. And we also assess the location or the position of a firm in the implied uncertainty spectrum. So in this lecture, we'll start off with step number two or we'll come discuss the step number two, which deals with understanding the supply chain capabilities of the existing supply chain. So supply chains are categorized or they are divided based upon characteristics that influence the supply chain responsiveness and supply chain efficiency. So supply chains are characterized or basically designed with a certain level of responsiveness and certain level of efficiency in mind. So it's based upon the characteristics that influence these two factors, the responsiveness and efficiency to supply chain that you categorize supply chains. So it is essential that we understand what we mean by the term supply chain responsiveness and supply chain efficiency. Now supply chain responsiveness is the supply chain's ability to do the following things. Okay. So when a supply chain is able to respond to a wide variety of quantity requirements, meet very short lead times, handle a large variety of products, meet high service level requirements, okay, handle supply uncertainty when a supply chain is designed to do all of these things or most of these things, we say that a supply chain is responsive. So the more of these abilities that a supply chain has, okay, the more responsive it is. So when a supply chain is designed to carry out or to do one or more of the following things, then a supply chain is said to be responsive. The larger or more the number of abilities a supply chain has, the more responsive it is. So these characteristics or these abilities that a supply chain should have for it to be responsive, they are similar to characteristics of demand and supply that lead to high implied uncertainty. So generally, high implied uncertainty conditions, demand or uh, high implied uncertainty conditions generally require a supply chain to be responsive. That is why we see a similarity in the ability of a responsive supply chain and characteristics of demand and supply which lead to high implied uncertainty. So whenever we have a situation where the demand and supply characteristics are very very uh, are uh, indicative of high implied uncertainty then we generally tailor the supply chain to be more responsive okay so higher supply chain responsiveness usually comes at a price or an expense so higher supply chain responsiveness usually results in higher supply chain costs to make a supply chain more responsive it involves spending more so the supply chain cost in turn is generally higher so this is the one important feature or one important characteristic that supply chains are designed to have responsiveness a certain level of responsiveness according to the implied uncertainty levels okay and the implied uncertainty levels as i discussed in the previous lecture is dependent upon the nature of demand and nature of supply okay the second important factor or characteristic of supply chain is the level of efficiency okay so 
as a term efficiency clearly defines it's nothing it has something to do with how well or how well a supply chain manages its cost so the higher uh, better the supply chain is at efficient being efficient lower is the cost involved in supply chains so supply chain efficiency is nothing but the inverse of cost and making cost of making and delivering the products to the consumers okay so larger the cost of making and delivering the product to the customer low will be the efficiency that's why we told is inverse of cost of making and delivering the product to the consumer so higher the supply chain cost low will be the supply and efficiency so this is for a, this is basically a straightforward term it's very very easy to understand okay so whenever we want or whenever the implied uncertainty in the supply chain is less such situations demand supply chains to be efficient so the level or extent of responsiveness and efficiency required by a supply chain that depends upon the level of implied uncertainty which is determined from step one okay so to understand where a particular firm lies or where a particular firm is currently when compared to the best supply chains in the industry at a particular point of time they have developed a frontier a particular graph which is called as a cost responsiveness efficient frontier okay so it is nothing but a curve that shows the lowest possible cost for a given level of responsiveness as i told you the higher the level of responsiveness required the higher will be the cost involved so this particular cost responsiveness efficient frontier is basically a curve that shows the lowest possible cost for a given level of responsiveness at a particular point of time and these frontiers represent the cost responsiveness performance of the best supply chain at a given point of time okay so the cost responsiveness frontier that curve itself is not a permanent one the curve keeps on shifting or moving with time as the technology develops so as technology develops you can see that the best supply chains at that particular point of time is no longer the same as was in the previous time period so the the frontier curve itself keeps on shifting okay and the frontier curve at for a given point of time it represents the cost responsiveness performance of the best supply chain at that particular point of time and the lowest cost is defined based upon existing technology so as the frontier the frontier changes as technology develops or evolves and processes improve over time a firm that is not on the efficient frontier on that particular curve to be specific can improve its responsiveness and cost by moving towards the frontier so every firm at a given point of time may not be operating on the frontier curve okay they may have a performance which is lower than the ideal or the maximum that is achievable at that particular point of time so in such a case if a firm is one that uh, if a firm finds its location to be one that is not on the frontier curve it can improve its responsiveness and cost by moving towards the frontier but whereas a firm that is already operating on the frontier that means it has the best uh, supply chain performance or the best cost responsiveness performance of uh, the supply chain at that particular given point of time it can only improve its responsiveness by increasing cost and becoming less efficient so to understand this particular cost response in efficient frontier we'll take a look at a, a graph okay a graph indicating the cost response in efficient frontier and taking into account two different cases for two different firms and see uh, what their locations are and how they can improve their responsiveness so this particular figure 
shows the cost responsiveness efficient frontier at a given point of time okay so along the x axis we have the cost okay so at the origin of the x axis at the origin of this particular graph we have high cost and as we move towards the right the cost cost keeps on lowering okay and along the y axis we have the level of responsiveness nearing the origin along the y axis the responsiveness is low and as we move upwards along the y axis the responsiveness improves and becomes higher okay and the black solid curve that you see represents the frontier curve okay so this is basically uh, points it's a, it's a combination or locus of points that shows the best possible uh, res the responsiveness okay the responsiveness at a given possible uh, combination of cost okay so the this in this this particular curve is indicative of the performance of the best supply chain at that particular point of time so whichever supply chain is performing the best at that particular point of time their cost responsiveness uh, combinations okay those points are basically plotted and formed as a frontier curve so this particular black solid curve is a frontier curve okay and the lowest possible cost is determined by the current existing technology so whatever is being used by the best supply chain at that particular given point of time that technology is what is referred to as the best possible technology and that is what leads to the lowest possible cost for a given level of responsiveness okay and as I told you, this particular curve, it evolves with time. It is not a curve that is stationary. Okay. Because with time, we see improvements in technologies and processes, which leads to lowering of costs. Okay. At a given level of responsiveness. So with improvement with time, technology as well as processes improve, which results in the shift in the uh, frontier curve. Okay, so the frontier curve generally shifts outwards in this is the direction of improvement. So as I told you, if this, this was a frontier curve at time T, okay, where the cost was this much at for a certain level of responsiveness. Okay, when as time progresses, the frontier curve shifts outwards. Okay, so for the same cost in the new frontier curve at time T plus delta T, I'm just assuming a time T plus delta t after time delta t the frontier curve has shifted to this particular position so at the same cost as the previous one we see that the level of responsiveness has gone up gone up so at the same cost you are getting a better level of responsiveness and this is because of the evolution in technology and improvement in processes used by supply chains so for at a given point of time the frontier curve remains fixed so we are going to take two cases of two firms, firm A and firm B, a firm A that lies away from the frontier curve. So its operation is not the optim as not at the optimum level. Okay. So at the given point of time, this is not one of the, uh, this particular firms that is firm A supply chain is not the optimum one because it is not uh, delivering the required level of responsiveness at a given cost okay what is best possible at that particular point of time whereas firm b is a one that has that matches its supply chain performance with the best possible ones that is why its position lies on the frontier curve okay so for firm a who spends say this much amount of cost for this much amount of responsiveness but at that particular point of time there are other supply chains in the industry okay which has at the same cost higher levels of performance so the optimum uh, responsiveness for that particular given cost is not being achieved by firm a so there is a scope for improvement okay so this particular firm can improve by moving in three directions either vertically upwards okay keeping the same cost but improving its responsiveness till it reaches the frontier curve so for the same cost it can improve its responsiveness and improve the improve its performance okay another way firm a can improve is by uh, reducing the cost for the given level of responsiveness so you can maintain the given level of responsiveness by moving horizontally towards the frontier curve 
okay so the firm firm is first possible um, source of improvement is by keeping the cost same and in increasing the responsiveness by moving towards a frontier curve vertically okay the second possible one is by moving towards a frontier curve sorry moving towards a frontier curve horizontally keeping the responsiveness same but reducing the cost so the cost actually comes down as you move towards a right towards a frontier curve okay and the best possible combination for firm a to move is to move along the direction of improvement this particular direction in a diagonal fashion okay towards the frontier curve so in all these three cases firm a is moving towards a frontier curve because its location in the cost responsiveness efficient frontier okay this particular chart is not optimal so here it moves diagonally towards the frontier curve where it reduces costs and also improves responsiveness so for by moving diagonally the firm can reduce cost and improve responsiveness so these are the conditions for improvement for uh, firm a okay and for firm b which is located on the frontier curve the only possible way for it to improve responsiveness or increase responsiveness is basically by trading off cost so it can move okay it can move along this particular curve by the arrows i mean moving along the curve okay so by moving along the curve what can what it can do is it can improve responsiveness but at the at the expense of cost increased cost so the efficiency comes down when it tries to improve its responsiveness okay so for firm b this is very difficult because it is at the current moment the best supply chain its performance is optimal okay for it to improve its responsiveness it comes at an expense of cost otherwise it has to improve the technology and its processes so that the frontier curve itself gets shifted okay thereby you have a new frontier curve which is represented by the green dotted line so i hope you understand uh, the basics or the concept of cost responsiveness efficient frontier okay so it is essential that you understand the current supply chain's capability okay this will determine if the current supply chain is designed to handle the level of uncertainty that is to be expected which is calculated or which is assessed in step number 1 so in step number 1 we have already assessed or identified the position of a firm on the implied uncertainty spectrum so this basically indicates what will be the level of uncertainty that a supply chain should be designed to handle and in the second step in this particular step we are assessing what is the uh, position or what is the capability of the supply chain okay in terms of responsiveness and efficiency so we plot the position of this particular of a particular firm a firm supply chain in terms of its responsiveness and efficiency on a spectrum called the responsiveness spectrum okay so the responsiveness spectrum categorizes firms based upon their level of efficiency and based upon their level of responsiveness so in this particular responsiveness spectrum we have four categories of firms okay each with as we move towards the right with increasing amount of responsiveness so the ones on the responsiveness spectrum towards the leftmost end are the ones which are highly efficient okay as we move towards the right from along the responsiveness spectrum we see that the amount of responsiveness increases so as i told you responsiveness and efficiency are uh, terms which generally compete okay which are counteracting so when generally at higher efficiency you generally trade off responsiveness and as efficiency comes down you generally improve responsiveness okay so that is why we see along the responsiveness spectrum as we move from the left towards right okay we see the categories moving from high being high, the supply chains moving from being highly efficient to highly responsive 
and in this responsiveness spectrum we categorize supply chains into four different categories in the responsiveness spectrum on the leftmost end we have highly efficient supply chains on the, towards the right of that we have somewhat efficient supply chains where the responsiveness is slightly larger or better than the one on highly efficient supply chains then as you still move towards the right we come across somewhat responsive supply chains okay and at the rightmost end of the responsiveness spectrum, we have highly responsive supply chains. So as we move from the left towards the right along the spectrum, we see increasing level of responsiveness. And examples for these are also given over here. So we, for highly efficient supply chains, the example is integrated steel mill product, steel mills, where the productions are production activities basically scheduled well in advance. Okay, so they are scheduled weeks or months ahead. Uh, and the product variety is basically kept low which basically helps and the flexibility is also very very low okay so these are kinds of uh, production facilities which are designed to be highly efficient uh, somewhat efficient an example for somewhat efficient supply chain is the one that is used by Haynes apparel where they may make their product to stock and the production lead times uh, with production lead times of several weeks Okay, so they change the parallels are examples of somewhat efficient supply chains and somewhat responsive. We have examples of most automotive production. They deliver a large variety of models in a few weeks time. So their lead times are shorter. Okay, they are able to deliver uh, a larger variety of products at a lower uh, uh, notice period or a lower lead time. Okay. And an example for a highly responsive supply chain is 7-Eleven Japan where 7-Eleven Japan they change their merchandising mix or product mix by location and time of day. So if you go into this particular store 7-Eleven in Japan in the morning the product variety will be one and when you if you visit the same store at night the product variety will be different and across different locations the merchandising mix will also be different. So we see a wide variety of supply chains based upon the level of responsiveness and efficiency. Some are tailored to be highly efficient, some are tailored to be highly responsive and some are basically uh, tailored to be somewhat responsive and somewhat cost efficient. Okay. So in step number two, we understand or we understand the capabilities of the existing supply chain and basically identify its position in the responsiveness spectrum. Where does the current supply chain lie? Is it one that is designed to be highly efficient or is it one that is designed to be highly efficient or is it somewhere in between? That is what we do in step number two. With this, I conclude lecture, this particular lecture. Thank you.